Uh, my name is Andres Gomez Emilson. I am the owner and main writer of the website called quiliacomputing.com and I will ba briefly summarize uh, some of the core ideas of this project. Uh, you can read more in the website and um, there's like a lot of projects there going on, some of them have been completed, but here I will just summarize actually the underlying philosophy. So the core idea of Quilia Computing is to do three things. The first one is to actually catalog the entire state space of consciousness. Well, this is an ex ex extremely demanding task and I don't think it will be completed in my lifetime or, or maybe for millions of years, but we can get started. By that, by cataloging the state space of consciousness, I mean to be able to identify all of the different qualia varieties that there are, such as uh, ex the experience of colors, the various uh, experiences of smell, touch, what it feels like to even have a thought, for example, all the various emotions and, and so on, um, as well as uh, catalog the values of each of those quilia varieties. Uh, just to give an example, the uh, phenomenal color is a quilia variety um, and it has um, a wide variety of, of values um, and it actually seems to have uh, three dimensions. It has um, brightness, uh, it also has the green-red axis and the blue-yellow axis and in that three-dimensional space uh, Every point corresponds to a, a possible uh, experience of color. <coughs> and um, to be able to basically describe the state space of phenomenal color is to identify those three dimensions. Um, you, you can actually read about how to identify those three dimensions in, in, in some articles, um, but also um, uh, hopefully I will make a video about it in, in the future. So that's number one. Identify the uh, state space of consciousness. Uh, the goal number two is to identify the computational properties of each of the varieties of consciousness. Basically, uh, if you want to solve a particular problem, uh, say a constraint satisfaction problem or a inference problem uh, and, and so on, um, how do you actually use a quilia machine? I mean that, that is to say a mind that actually perceives um, and, and experiences different quill varieties. How do you combine them, uh, put them together uh, or not, such that in the end you actually end up doing useful computation? Um, there are a lot of people who either believe that quilia doesn't exist or uh, alternatively that quilia actually doesn't do anything. It's just there hanging out. But the uh, simple fact that natural selection actually um, took care of um, creating these uh, uh, incredible world simulation that each of us inhabits, uh, instantiated by our nervous systems, uh, indicates that actually our conscious experience is causally relevant. And it's not at all clear yet in, in what way actually consciousness is exerting its causal power. Um, and the, 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 the project is to actually be able to say, hey, all of these quill varieties are extremely good at X, where X is a particular computational task. And just to give you a taste of what these might look like, um, well, we have that actually in vision. We have several layers of quilia varieties stacked together, uh, ranging from the phenomenal experience of motion to the phenomenal experience of color, as well as edges and shapes and so on. Um, and they actually match to particular layers in, in the visual cortex. Uh, and uh, by combining all of them, um, you can actually get to, to run a, a very interesting visual classifier, very similar to the convolutional neural networks that we've seen in these trippy Google deep dream pictures and so on. Um, so in that sense, this is like solving a computational, uh, computational problem. Um, but we want to go like into a finer uh, level of analysis to be able to say, hey, like the, the Qualia Blue contains all of these uh, implicit symmetries and information encoded in it that you can use in order to represent uh, information states and, and solve problems. Um, and finally, the third goal is perhaps the ethically most relevant one. And this is valence research. Um, valence is one of the main components of the dimensions in emotions. Uh, you could actually describe it as potentially a 
dimension in the state space of consciousness. Um, there's many words for it. Some people use the term hedonic tone. Other people um, describe it as the pleasure pain axis. And one of the core goals of Quilia computing is to be able to take as an input a conscious experience in terms of all the Quilia varieties that are in there and the structural relationships between them, arguably extracted out of a brain state, uh, and then uh, run it through an equation and get a series of values describing the hedonic quality of this experience that, that we are trying to understand. Um, such that we would have actually an objective measurement of how good or bad you're feeling based on your uh, brain state and, and various properties of it. Um, the objective here is to actually be able to, on the one hand, um, diminish suffering as much as possible by making very concrete and incisive and uh, very specific interventions in our nervous system um, with as few side effects as possible so that we can avoid uh, negative states um, while also, of course, remaining um, fully sane and, 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 and capable of uh, enjoying life and so on, but also being functional and pro-social, which is important. Uh, something that uh, some people uh, around me describe it as um, benevolence engineering or bene benevolence enhancement. Um, and um, this third goal is ethically crucial because as far as I can tell myself, and you may disagree with me, uh, what makes life worthwhile is actually the positive states of consciousness that we can access. So if we can actually enrich our consciousness, and I don't mean in, in the sense of just supplanting it by a um, just intense positive ex experience like a continuous orgasm, al although some people might like to do that and all the power to them, but more to be able to re-engineer our consciousness such that we inhabit only positive hedonic states or positive valence states, um, such that at no point we actually feel bad, but we can still be functional. And that is the third goal. Um, I actually suspect that it's possible to solve the third goal without fully solving the first two. Um, however, I think like some fundamentals of the first two will be necessary. So um, what are the implications of these three goals. Um, I mean, the third one is a can of worms in terms of how it would transform society. Um, so we will leave that for later. Uh, I, I'm actually currently writing an article about that called uh, Future Economics, um, basically how valence engineering will modify the, the face of economic transactions. Um, but the, the first two goals, uh, I can go a little bit in, more into detail about like what actually they're about in, in the sense that if we can solve at least partially one of them and partially the other one, um, we can actually get a recursively self-improving loop. Um, just as there's a lot of speculation in ra the rationalist community, uh, hacking consciousness community, and arguably all over the world, in part thanks to the recent advancements in AI, uh, people who worry that somebody out there may be able to instantiate a uh, recursively self-improving loop where a machine uh, learns to make itself smarter and just like it spirals out of control, um, which is, yes, concerning. And we have to, to figure out how to avoid uh, an unpleasant scenario there. Um, I also think um, that actually by understanding consciousness, a recursively self-improving loop will very likely happen. More so, there, there's also reasons to suspect that it's uh, going to be substantially more safe than like a blind um, intelligence that doesn't care about consciousness. But if, if, if the, the center of our attention is consciousness, um, then a, a lot of interesting things happen and there's like several safeguards that are unique to this situation. But basically the self, rec rec self the recursively self-improving loop that comes out of these two first goals um, happens as follows. If we describe the state space of consciousness, uh, and we identify new qualia varieties, say, for example, the kind of odd, interesting, and potentially computationally useful uh, qualia that people experience on, say, DMT or, or LSD and so on, and we can classify them and, and really understand them. Um, then there's like a bigger menu of options uh, from which we can choose to investigate for their computational properties. 
um, if we investigated these qualia uh, varieties for computational properties and we actually detect some some interesting ones uh, we can implement them in our own in our own brains um, in this way uh, we will suddenly not only expand the range of things that we can experience but also expand the range of things that we can compute um, and I don't even I don't only mean in terms of just like uh, Turing computation, uh, such as what a Turing Turing machine can do, but but also just conscious computation in terms of being able to utilize particular computational properties of consciousness in order to navigate the state space of consciousness, and you can realize that you suddenly now because of your um, the fact that you've recruited this new qualia variety for computational purposes, if now you become more efficient at navigating the state space of consciousness, you will be more likely to detect new qualia varieties as well. Um, and this will feed the cycle. In turn, we might be able to bootstrap ourselves from our current very limited knowledge into uh, super sentient, full spectrum, super intelligence, a term defined by David Pierce, uh, links below, where um, we have access to the entire state space of consciousness and to the entire set of computational properties that can arise from the permutations of these state spaces. Um, and yes, I, I suspect actually this is inevitable. Um, I also suspect that it's good. Uh, it will uh, amplify our freedom by liberating ourselves and, and, and allowing us to actually understand what reality is all about. Um, without like truly understanding the state space of consciousness, I think I think our, our guesses about what reality is are uh, pretty impoverished. Um, just as as a, a blind person um, might might have to um, guess. Um, what what it would be like to actually see a painting just by listening to it and yes it's there's some similarities but <laughs> there's a bridge you cannot cross unless you actually have access to those qualia varieties and yes so these are the three goals um, and I look forward to hopefully making more videos and um, yeah I hope all of you feel very blissful and thanks for watching